Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another episode of Whatever Happened To! The series where we take a where are they now look at players who found success in the National Hockey League but are no longer permanent fixtures in the league either due to controversy, poor play or just rotten luck. In today's episode we are going to be taking a look at a 9 year veteran of the league and a 2016 NHL All-Star as we ask Whatever Happened To Leo Komarov? The 180th overall pick of the 2006 NHL draft by the Toronto Maple Leafs, Leo Komarov would begin his pro career in Finland shortly after his selection, as he joined the SM Liga's Lati Pelicans for the 06-07 season. From there, the 6th round draft pick would spend the next 3 seasons with the Pelicans organization, score 50 points in 158 games with the team, and rack up a whopping 328 penalty minutes during that span before taking his talents to Russia. As he joined Dynamo Moscow for the 0910 season. Having joined the KHL during its sophomore year of existence, Komarov would end up making quite the home for himself, as he would spend the next three years of his career as a member of Dynamo's roster. During this time, the Finnish forward would produce his fair share of success, as he potted 66 points in 145 regular season games, earned a place at the 2011 KHL All-Star Game, and helped Moscow lift the 2011 Gagarin Cup as KHL Playoff Champions. So yeah, Komarov could have done a lot worse for himself. Having spent the last six seasons refining his game in Europe and having earned his fair share of accolades during that span, Komarov had caught the attention of his draft team overseas. So much so that on May 5th, 2012, the 24-year-old signed a one-year entry-level contract with the Toronto Maple Leafs worth up to $1.2 million. So thanks to his hard work and perseverance over the last half a decade, Komarov had finally secured his first NHL contract and he would make the move across the pond for the upcoming season of play. But first, there was a lockout! During the 2012 lockout, Komarov would split his time between two different teams, as he spent several weeks in the KHL back with Dynamo Moscow, before moving to North America and joining the AHL's Toronto Marlies too. After playing 27 total games during that span, and after scoring 19 points between the two sides, the lockout would finally come to an end, and Komarov would attempt to make the jump to the NHL. Though he had made the move to North America just a few weeks prior, and though he had only played just a handful of games across the pond, Komarov's hard work would finally pay off, as on January 19th, 2013, Komarov would earn a place on the Maple Leafs opening night roster, and he would be suiting up in his NHL debut. It may have taken him a few more years than he would have liked to get there, but that just makes the victory all the sweeter, right guys? From there, Komarov would go on to play the entire 12-13 season with Toronto and produce modest scoring numbers for the team, as he potted 4 goals and 9 points in 42 games that year. Not the greatest production of course, but the guy was playing his first season of NHL hockey during a lockout year no less, and he was known more for his physicality than he was his goal scoring, so give him a break alright? Despite these somewhat underwhelming numbers though, this performance would help Toronto punch their ticket to the playoffs for the first time in 8 seasons, but Komarov would go scoreless in 7 games, as Toronto were eliminated in the first round by the Boston Bruins. Well at least this would be the only time that decade that Toronto would lose to Boston in the postseason, right? Right? Once his one year contract had expired and having finally made it to the show, it was expected that Komarov would re-sign with Toronto and return to the team for the upcoming season of play. However, the forward would drop quite the bombshell instead, as in June of 2013, it was revealed that Komarov had signed a one year contract with Dynamo Moscow. And why was Komarov returning to the KHL? Well apparently it was due to him wanting to represent Team Finland at the 2014 Winter Olympic Games. Now sure, he may have forfeited playing in the best league in the world, but Komarov clearly wanted to represent his country on one of the sport's biggest stages, and he wanted to try and take home an Olympic medal while he still had the chance. So I can't say that I blame him for making this decision, can you? Having returned to Russia yet again, and having rejoined Dynamo's roster for his fifth stint with the team, Komarov would register his best year yet, as the 26 year old potted 34 points in 52 KHL games, and earned his second trip to the All-Star game too. Oh, and he did make Finland's roster for the 2014 Olympics, where he helped the team win a bronze medal at the competition. So it's safe to say that his decision paid off. 
Once the 13-14 season had concluded and Komarov's contract with Moscow had expired, the Finnish forward was eager to head back across the pond and continue his career in the NHL. Luckily for him, Toronto wanted to bring him back into the fold and pay him handsomely for his services. As on July 1st, 2014, Komarov signed a four-year, $11.8 million contract with the Leafs, worth an average annual value of nearly $3 million a season. So after leaving the show behind just a year prior, and after producing another strong season in Europe, Komarov was returning to the NHL for the foreseeable future. Would things work out better the second time around though? Yes. Yes, they would. The 14-15 NHL season saw Komarov return to North America, earn a place on Toronto's roster for the second time, and take to the ice for his sophomore year in the show. Though he had only played half a regular season during his debut year in the league, and though he had produced minimal scoring numbers in the process, the 27-year-old would take a notable step forward the second time around, as he potted 8 goals and 26 points in 62 regular season games. Despite this notable improvement though, Komarov was unable to help Toronto punch their ticket to the post season, as the Leafs missed the playoffs for the second year in a row. The next three years of Komarov's career saw the forward continue to suit up for the Leafs and cement his reputation as a reliable bottom six grinder who led by example both on and off the ice. After all, the former sixth round pick would wear an A on his jersey as an alternate captain in each of those three years, would register at least 30 points twice and rack up 30 penalty minutes every season en route to potting 40 goals and 87 points in 223 games during that span. In the midst of this tenure in Toronto, Komarov would also earn one of the greatest achievements of his entire NHL career. Having scored 27 points in his first 37 games during the 15-16 NHL season, and having been given regular shifts on the Leafs' first forward line by head coach Mike Babcock, Komarov would be named to the 2016 NHL All-Star Game. Now while Komarov became an obvious representative for the Leafs, since he led the entire roster in both goals and points by the Christmas break, the 29 year old never expected to be invited to such an event. In fact, it is said that Komarov was so sure that he wouldn't attend, that he had supposedly booked a vacation during the All-Star break, which he subsequently had to cancel once he received an official invitation to the festivities. Though Komarov would score a single point in two games during the competition, and while his scoring touch would cool off significantly once the regular season resumed, his 36 points that year still helped him finish third place in scoring across the entire Maple Leafs roster. Third in scoring with only 36 points? God, those mid-2010s Leafs teams were awful, weren't they? Once the 17-18 season came to an end and his four-year contract had expired, Komarov was in need of a new deal. Since his point scoring had taken a notable step backwards compared to years past, and since he was coming off his least productive season since his rookie year half a decade prior, the Leafs selected to move on from their former draft pick, as they left Komarov unsigned and allowed him to walk into free agency. Having become a UFA for the first time in his career, the 30-year-old quickly found another team interested in his services, as on July 1st, 2017, Komarov signed a four-year, $12 million contract worth an average annual value of $3 million a season with the New York Islanders. So after being drafted by Toronto 12 years prior, and after spending parts of five seasons with the team, Komarov was leaving the only NHL franchise he had ever known, and was taking his talents to Long Island. Though he had just signed the biggest and most expensive contract of his entire NHL career, thanks to the events of the following years, this deal wouldn't reach its intended conclusion. The 18-19 season saw Komarov suit up with the Islanders for the very first time, and look to make a strong first impression for his new team. Though he had taken a clear step backwards during his final year in Toronto, Komarov would find his form once again, as he potted 6 goals and 26 points in 82 regular season games. This production would help the Islanders return to the playoffs for the first time in three years, where Komarov would score two points in eight postseason games, but New York was swept in the second round by the Carolina Hurricanes. Not the best way to bow out, of course, but at least they made it to the dance, right? 
The next two years of Komarov's career would see the forward remain with the Islanders and continue to perform at a similar level to years past, as he potted 5 goals and 22 points in 81 total games. While this might not seem like much compared to his previous seasons in the show, it's worth mentioning that Komarov missed 43 games due to injuries in this period, while the league was significantly disrupted by the global pandemic. So there was a lot going on, you know. Despite facing his fair share of struggles during this span, Komarov and the Islanders would embark on a pair of deep postseason runs. In fact, Komarov's six points in 36 playoff games would help New York reach the Eastern Conference Finals both years, where they would be eliminated by the eventual Stanley Cup champions, the Tampa Bay Lightning, either year. Ooh, so close yet so far, right guys? Having helped the Islanders reach the final four in back-to-back -back seasons, and having finally recovered from his injuries, Komarov was eager to go one step further and get his hands on the cup during the upcoming year of play. However, both his tenure with the Islanders and his NHL career would soon come to an unexpected end. As the 21-22 season got underway, Komarov returned to the Islanders roster for the final year of his contract with the team. Unfortunately though, the Finnish forward wouldn't stick around for very long. After playing a single game with New York on October 16th, 2021, and after going scoreless with two penalty minutes during that contest, Komarov would be placed on waivers on October 18th. Once he cleared waivers the following day on October 19th, the Islanders assigned Komarov to their AHL affiliate, the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, until further notice. Though he had just been demoted to the minors for the first time in his pro career, and though he was expected to remain in Bridgeport for the foreseeable future, the 34-year-old had no intentions of sticking around for the rest of the year. So much so, that he didn't play a single AHL game after his demotion. After several weeks had passed and with him still refusing to budge, both parties agreed to go their separate ways, as on November 14th, 2021, the Islanders announced that they had terminated Komarov's contract with the team. Having become an unrestricted free agent for just the second time in his career, and with little interest in signing him from the rest of the NHL, the 34-year-old decided to head back across the pond, as he signed a two-year contract with SKA St. Petersburg on November 15th, 2021. So after playing nearly a decade of his career in the best league in the world, and after spending the last eight years exclusively in the show, Komarov was leaving North America for good and was taking his talents to the KHL. Though he would rejoin the league for the third time in his career, Komarov's new deal wouldn't quite go to plan. Having returned to Russia once again, Komarov would spend the rest of the 21-22 season with SKA and make a strong first impression for his new side, as he wore an A on his jersey as an alternate captain of the team and also potted 6 points in 18 regular season games while he was at it too. In the midst of this tenure, Komarov would also get his hands on one of the greatest awards that the sport has to offer, as he earned a place on Team Finland's roster at the 2022 Winter Olympic Games, served as an alternate captain of the team, and potted a single point in six games, as he helped his country take home their first ever gold medal at the event. Not bad for a guy who left the NHL less than three months ago, eh folks? Though the KHL season would finish several weeks early due to the global pandemic, and while many of the league's foreign players would leave the league prematurely due to the conflict in Ukraine, Komarov elected to remain with SKA during the 2022 Gagarin Cup playoffs, where he potted three points in 16 postseason games before St. Petersburg were eliminated in the Western Conference Finals by CSKA Moscow. The three certainties in life, death, Taxes, CSKA Moscow defeating SKA St. Petersburg in the Western Conference Finals. Just as it should be, right? Once his debut year with SKA had concluded and the first year of his contract had expired, questions were raised surrounding whether Komarov would return to the team for the upcoming 22-23 season. Less than two weeks after SKA's elimination on April 27th, these concerns were seemingly validated, as reports emerged claiming that Komarov had terminated his contract with St. Petersburg and that he would be leaving the KHL altogether over the coming week. Just three days later on April 30th, these claims would be confirmed by the team itself, as SKA announced that Komarov had left St. Petersburg and thanked him for his efforts during his tenure with the organization. So after signing a two-year contract with the team less than six months prior, Leo Komarov had terminated his deal with SKA and he was leaving the KHL. Given the current circumstances in Eastern Europe, and given that many of his contemporaries had also done the same, I don't really blame him for making this decision, do you? 
Having become an unrestricted free agent once again, and with no desire to call it a day on his career, Komarov began searching for a new team to play for during the 22-23 season. After weighing up his options for several months, the 35-year-old would finally make his choice, as on September 4th, 2022, he signed a one-year contract with Lulia HC of the Swedish Hockey League. So after leaving the NHL less than a year prior, and after terminating his contract in Russia, Komarov shall be taking his talents to Sweden for the upcoming season of play. To this day, Leo Komarov has joined Lulia's roster for the 22-23 season. Though he is about to embark on his debut year in the SHL, and though his best days are clearly behind him now, since he will turn 36 years old midway through the season, Komarov's wealth of experience in North America, his lengthy tenure in the KHL, and the numerous accolades he has earned over the years, should be more than enough to help him produce a strong opening outing in the Swedish League. I mean, the guy has spent nearly a decade and a half of his pro career playing in some of the best hockey leagues in the world, and he won an Olympic gold medal earlier this year. He can still play at a pretty high level, you know. But regardless of how the season unfolds, Leo Komarov produced a pretty impressive career in the show. After all, in 491 NHL games, Komarov potted 63 goals and 170 points during that span, as well as 9 points in 59 playoff games too. Add to that his 2016 All-Star appearance, his various awards across Europe, and his $22.5 million of career earnings, and he certainly could have done a lot worse for himself, that's for sure. Not bad for a former sixth round draft pick, eh folks? And on that note, I'm going to end today's video. That's what happened to Leo Komarov. What do you guys think about Komarov's NHL career? Was it good? bad, or do you wish that he was still playing in the show? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Bexy93, Burned Retinas, Clayton Hallam, Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, Raquel, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.